Okay, so today we're going to talk about solving differential equations. And I want to remind you, a differential equation is just any equation that has a derivative in it. So, first thing if we want to solve a differential equation is we're always going to need to separate. Um, and so when we separate, we need to make sure, if our, let's say our variables are y and x, we need to make sure dy and y are on one side by themselves, and dx and x, um, and potentially any constants are on a side by themselves. Keep in mind, when you're moving things from side to side, you can only, I really want to emphasize this, you can only multiply or divide to move things from side to side. Next thing you'll do is you'll integrate. And you all know plenty of handy dandy calculus, so you know how to integrate. Cool. So step three and four is just in some cases, not all cases. So if you have like an ln um, in your equation once you integrate, um, you're going to need to solve to get the ln of whatever it is all on a side by itself. Um, and then you can, um, for step number four, to get rid of the ln, you can do e to the ln to get rid of um, the ln. So again, three and four are optional um, if your function has an ln in it. Um, step number five is after you integrate, you're going to solve for x or y or whatever you want to solve for. And then step six and seven, we'll use whatever our initial conditions are to solve for c. And then for step number seven, we'll plug c back in and voila, we got our final answer. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and go through three examples together. Okay, so our first example is step number one. And again, I'm following the seven steps above um, for how to do all of these problems. So separate. So I need to make sure dy and anything dealing with y is on one side and dx and x are on the other. Cool. Um, this one actually doesn't look too bad. So it looks like dy, I can just get on the side itself. I can multiply both sides by dx. dx, dx. Um, so then we have negative cosine of 3x plus x dx. Great. So I got my first step done. And again, I only multiplied or divided to get things from side to side. So now I can integrate. Oh my goodness, that's so fun. I love integrating. Cool. So first thing we can do, integral of dy is just going to be y. So let's look at the other side. Integral of negative cosine of 3x. So integral of negative cosine is negative sine of 3x. And then we have to do off the chain rule. I forget my calculus term, sorry. So divide by 3. And then plus integral of x is going to be 1 half x squared using the power of rule of the opposite of it. Um, and then we always have to have um, a constant when we're integrating. So plus c. Great. Um, so we got it. Cool. Um, and then Step number five is solve for x or y. Well, we already solved for y, so in this case, not too shabby. Um, six and seven is use initial conditions to solve for c. We don't have any initial conditions in this case, so I'm just going to skip that step. So we got our good old answer. Great. So for a separate, separate second example, however you say that one, uh, we're going to go ahead and solve again. So dy dx equals y plus a. So first thing we always need to do is separate. And again, we can only multiply or divide to move things from side to side. Um, and generally, we want dy on top and dx on top. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dx just to start it off. So dy equals y plus a times dx. Great. Um, and again, we need dy's and y's on one side and dx's and x's on the other side. Well, well, it looks like y plus a, y is not on the same side as the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides by y plus a to get it to the other side. Cool. So we have dy over y plus h equals dx. Great. So now we've separated completely. So now what we can do is integrate. I always make sure to show the integral symbol. I think it's good to get in the habit to show that. Great. So, okay, the right-hand side is easy. That's going to just be x. And keep in mind, we're always going to need a constant there, so x plus c. The constant can be in either side, but I just always put on the simpler side. Um, just because a constant on both sides is the same thing as a constant on one side. They're just different constants. Cool. Let's look at the other. Ooh, this looks like a trickier one. dy over y plus a. Okay. Let's do a little u substitution here. So let um, u equals y plus h. So then du equals just dy. Cool. Let's put that on in. So dy is just going to be du. And then y plus h is just u. So I know from my handy-dandy calculus that the integral of du over u is ln. 
of the absolute value of u equals x plus c. And I know from what I just have that the ln of, or excuse me, that u equals y plus h. So I can just plug that in. So then we just have the ln of y plus h equals x plus c. Great. So our goal in the end is to get y by itself. Sorry, that's deleted. To get y by itself and x by itself. So x looks by itself. Y is not quite by itself. So to get rid of the ln, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to raise everything to the power of e. So let's go ahead and do that now. So e, let's see, I have two pages. That looks silly. Um, and then e. Great. So on the left-hand side, we know that e to the ln is just essentially kind of cancels that out. So that is just going to become y plus h equals. On the other side, we know, and I'm just going to write this to the side, like let's say you have e to the x plus c. That's the same thing as e to the x times e to the c. And e to the c is just another constant. e is a number, what, 2.7 or whatever it is. Um, so that's just a number. So that's another constant. So I'm just going to call that e to the x times c2, just a different constant. Cool. So let's just put that in. So now from, again, the other side, e to the x plus c. That's the same thing we know as e to the x times e to the c, or I'll just call it another constant, e to the x times, I don't know, c prime or something like that. Cool. So, okay. So now we are on step number five. So we need to finish solving for y. Oh, pretty easy. We can just subtract eight from both sides. So y, oh my goodness, we're going to subtract eight. So we have y equals e to the x times c prime, whatever that is, take away 8. Great. And so our last little step will be to, for 6 and 7, is to use our initial conditions to solve for c. But we don't have any initial conditions, so just let's just leave it like that. Okay. So we have one more last differential equation to solve. So for this one, dy dx equals 2y plus 8. Okay. So first thing that we always do is separate. So let's get the dy's and y's on one side and dx's and x's on the other side. Again, we can only multiply and divide to move things from side to side. Like everything has to be multiplied by dy and everything has to be multiplied by dx. So, okay, dx is on the bottom, we want on the top. Let's multiply both sides by dx. So we have dy equals 2y plus 8 dx. Okay, so y's, we have some y's on one side and some y's on the other side. So let's get them all on the same side, and again, we're keeping dy on the top, because that's what we're going to integrate with respect to, and then let's divide both sides by 2y plus h, great, cancel this out, um, so we have dy over 2y plus h equals dx, great, so we went ahead and separated, now we have everything on the correct side, let's go ahead and integrate, cool, the right hand side is pretty easy, and our goal is dx, it's just going to be x, and again, we have to have our constant there, plus c. Other side looks a little trickier. Let's go ahead and use some fun u substitution. I love u substitution. So let's say let u equals 2y plus 8. So then du equals what? 2 dy? Yeah, that looks right to me. Cool. Um, and then we're going to have to solve back in for dy, so we know du over 2 equals dy. Great, let's plug this back in. So dy we know is du over 2, and then 2y plus h we know is u. Cool. Actually, I thought that looked pretty sloppy. So now we have um, du over u, and then there's just like a one half in front, equals x plus c. Great. So one half is just a good old constant. So that's just going to kind of stay there. We can almost pull that out. Um, so it's essentially like for this, I just like to write it in a form that makes more sense to me. 1 over u du equals x plus c. Cool. So now, okay, integral of 1 over u, we know that's just ln of u. So we have 1 half ln of absolute value of u, excuse me, I misspoke earlier, equals x plus c. Great. So now, okay, we do have an ln in it, so we do have to do step number three. So let's get ln of step all to one side. So I'll multiply both sides by two. So it's ln 
of x with value of u equals 2x plus 2c. C again is just a constant. 2 is a constant. So that's just going to be a new constant. We could call it like c1 or heck, let's just call it c, whatever you want. I'm going to call it c1 for fun. U, let's go ahead and plug back in what u was. So that was ln of 2y plus 8. Cool. So now we have ln of like everything stuff. Again, this is step number three all by itself. So now we can go to the next step, step number four. So to get rid of an ln, we have to do essentially the opposite, which is exponentiate. So I'm going to exponentiate both sides. So e to the ln, that essentially just cancels out the ln. So that is going to become 2y plus 8 equals, this is going to be e to the 2x times e to the c1. Wow, isn't that nifty? e to the c1, that's just a new constant. Let's call it c2. So it's e to the c2 times e to the 2x. And again, 2y plus 8. Cool. So our last little step, let's go ahead and solve for y. So I can do some fun old math. I love math. Equals c2 e to 2x minus 8 over 2. Great. And our last step, I didn't give any initial conditions, but our last step would be to solve for initial condition c. Or c2, I guess I called it. 